Thank you. So good afternoon, everyone. I am Benji from Aqua Security. Um, our topic today is why you should care about Kubernetes best practices. If you don't, my hope is that in the next four minutes and 53 seconds, you will. So at the end of 2017, CNCF did a survey where they asked the participants what was the most important uh, or the most the key challenges around the Kubernetes deployments. And uh, conveniently for the topic of my talk today, security was the number one topic. If you Google today Kubernetes security, you'll find that there are approximately 7 million results back from Google. In contrast, if you Google Windows 2019 security, which isn't GA yet, there's almost double that amount. This is representative of a certain gap, knowledge gap, in the information security industry regarding not just Kubernetes, but in general, containerized applications, especially how do organizations secure their Kubernetes environments. Because of this, if you ask your average chief information security officer or even a standard information security professional, um, how do I secure my Kubernetes cluster? What are the best practices? Their facial expression will probably be something similar to this. And the reason is, is that security folks are still trying to kind of get to terms and understand how do containers work, what is Kubernetes, and take their existing security tools and procedures and apply them to something like a Kubernetes cluster. So, as it happens, Kubernetes has done an amazing job of documenting how to secure your Kubernetes cluster. Um, some of the, just some of the topics that are covered in this very, uh, I would say, extensive document are things like ensuring authentication is enabled, how do you enforce segregation of duties, and you do that obviously using authorization, um, ensuring that every, uh, all communication with your API server is authenticated, encryption of secrets, uh, recently even encryption of objects in the etcd database, um, and obviously ensuring that there is constant visibility of everything that happens within the cluster environment. Failing to do this, there are many, many risks from a security standpoint. Some of the top ones you can see on the slide, they are things like privilege escalation. So within my Kubernetes cluster, how do I ensure that I don't get, if one node is compromised, that doesn't allow me to see all the nodes, all, all the nodes, or get access to all the images within that cluster. Exfiltration of sensitive information, that can be secrets, those can be uh, you know, manifest information. We want to ensure that even if a particular component of the cluster is compromised, that the damage is minimal. CIS, the Center of Internet Security, has done an incredible job. Um, they've created a standard both for Docker and Kubernetes, which defines how should my Kubernetes be uh, secured. It's a 200 plus page document, very detailed, with step-by-step -step examples, and most organizations should be using this to gauge you know, how secure their Kubernetes cluster is or not. So if there's so much around, if there's great documentation from Kubernetes, if there's things like the CIS benchmark, why are we hearing more and more frequently about high-profile cyber breaches that are happening via Kubernetes? This is an example from Tesla at the end of 2017. Tesla had a publicly uh, internet-facing Kubernetes cluster. Uh, the particular instance that they used had the Kubernetes dashboard enabled with anonymous authentication, meaning that all the hackers had to do was access that dashboard, and from the dashboard, they had visibility to the secrets, the nodes, the pods, and everything within that cluster. Obviously, that is not something we want to happen. So, to understand why this is happening, I asked a friend of mine, Johnny English, to try and get some kind of insight into why companies are still not securing their clusters. So that's a very profound insight from uh, this very wise gentleman, but that is something that we should all be aware of. Yes, you can secure your Kubernetes clusters. However, many flavors that are, in, that are being used and are ubiquitous today are not secure by default. Or every information security professional knows one of the key, I would say, under the key tenets of security is to secure things by default. Three tools that I'm gonna leave with you in the next 30 seconds. These are all free. 
You can get them from the Aqua GitHub page. The first one is QBench by our very own Liz Rice. This will take the CIS benchmark and automate. It'll basically do an assessment of your Kubernetes cluster and tell you for each check whether you pass or fail. Very, very uh, important tool. The second one is Cube Hunter. This allows you to do a um, essentially penetration test against your Kubernetes cluster. The third one is a micro scanner. It secures your payload. Okay, so within the image, when you build the image, I'm being kicked off. But when you build the image, essentially, we can check what are the contents in that image? Is that image, does it contain vulnerabilities or not? And you can see here as an example, the build will actually fail. So if you go to our a GitHub page, you can try the micro scanner. It's completely free. In this example here, we've identified a, a vulnerable version of Nginx inside that image. Okay? And we give you the MVD score, the vendor score, and the information you need to remediate this image to ensure that it does not expose you to unnecessary risks. Thank you very much for your time.